Hi guys, I'm Eric Voss, and we just got our first look at Spider-Man Homecoming, starring Captain America Civil War's Tom Holland as the new young Spider-Man. Now, this is the third live-action version of Spider-Man that we've seen, and I love a lot about the other two versions, but this might be the first one that really nails a character as he is in the comics. Maybe it's the fact that they got an actual kid for the part, or that Marvel Studios is co-producing this movie with Sony, making it a true Marvel Homecoming. Oh, that's why they called it that. I'm gonna point out everything that you missed, along along with a few theories and predictions, including some stuff in the other international trailer that was also released. All right, let's get started. What's up, guys? Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. I can tell Hulk gives it away. Okay, so after a few establishing shots of Peter Parker's neighborhood in Queens, New York, we see this gang of thieves using an interesting device to crack open some ATMs. So what is this thing? Some people are saying it could be based on Chitauri technology since this is the MCU now and that is possible, but really based on shots from other parts in the trailer, it looks like Peter Parker isn't the only one building advanced tech in this movie. And I just love Peter Parker's Bugs Bunny What's Up Doc pose intro here. What's up guys? Spider-Man's sense of humor has always been a tricky thing to nail down. Like his jokes are kind of sarcastic, not too serious, meta style. Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. I can tell Hulk gives it away. It was actually a main influence for Deadpool, except Deadpool is obviously way edgier. So hearing Peter joke around about the Avengers is exactly what we love about the character from the Marvel comics. And speaking of the comics, Spider-Man foiling a bank robbery by people wearing Avengers masks seems to be inspired by a scene from the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, though that scene had a Batman mask in there. I also liked each of these 60s era Avenger masks. This isn't just a reference to the MCU in its current timeline. These are literal throwbacks backs to the old comics. And as always, no one wants to be Hawkeye. Uh, I'm just a... Uh... The helper. And obviously, Peter is wearing the new Spider-Man suit that he received from Tony Stark and Captain America Civil War, placing most of the events in this movie after Civil War. And I'll come back to this, but let's move on. Does Liz get a new top? No, we've seen that before. Never with that skirt. She probably stops staring before it gets creepy, though. Yeah. Too late. You guys are losers. So here we see how Spider-Man Homecoming will be a true teen comedy, with Peter as a legit mopey nerd and outcast, as opposed to the stereotypical nerd versions in other movies where they only spend small parts of the movie in high school taking cool Hollywood celebrities and making them nerds by giving them glasses. Now, us nerds know what real nerds look like. They look like you, Tom Holland, minus the abs. We don't, we don't do crunches. And I love the music that they use for this trailer. It's MGMT's Time to Pretend, which you've probably heard before. It's been in like a ton of TV shows and trailers. It's just a great youth anthem with the lyrics expressing the feeling of wanting to rebel against a mundane, preset life and explore a life of adventure. I'm just like Peter wants to by joining the Avengers. We meet a few of the new characters in this section, including Ned Leeds, who's a character from the Spider-Man comics. He works with Peter at the Daily Bugle, and then he later gets like brainwashed and framed by Hobgoblin. But in this movie, Ned appears to just be like a high school friend and confidant to Peter. We also see Zendaya's character named Michelle, who we still don't know much about. And then this girl that Peter and Ned are creepily gawking at is Liz Allen. She's from the early issues of the comics, and unlike Mary Jane Watson and Gwen Stacy, Liz Allen and Peter Parker were never really a thing. In fact, apparently Liz Allen already did make a cameo in the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man as this nerdy girl on the bus who won't let Peter sit next to her. And notice how Liz is hanging a homecoming banner, suggesting that the school's homecoming week will be the setting for this story. It makes me wonder if future Spider-Man movies will turn this into a pattern, like Spider-Man graduation or Spider-Man f***ing your teacher. At least that was my high school experience. No, it was Moving on. So to become an Avenger, are there like trials or an interview? Just don't do anything I would do. And definitely don't do anything I wouldn't do. There's a little gray area in there and that's where you operate. Oh. All right. That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. All right, kid. 
good luck out there. So here we see Peter Parker with Tony Stark, who lays out the small range of hero jobs that Peter's allowed to take on, like don't step on Stark's turf, but also don't do anything bad either. Just basically stick to saving a few ATMs, I guess. This also kind of hints when this movie takes place. Based on the conversation and the fact that Stark is dropping Peter off, this seems to be taking place after the airport battle and Civil War, making me think that the beginning of this movie is going to be like additional clips from the battle from Peter's point of view, leading to this abrupt goodbye and Peter longing to swing back into the action. And the international trailer confirms this sequence a little bit further with a few extra lines with Peter learning that he gets to keep the suit and Stark emphasizing that Peter is not an Avenger. I also like Peter's shirt here. The physics is theoretical, but the fun is real. It seems like he's going to be wearing a few different dorky science shirts and there's a fun connection about another one later, so let's move on. Listen, I know school sucks. Peter, you still with us? Uh, yeah, yeah. I know you want to save the world, but you're not ready yet. You're the Spider-Man. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is just a costume. This is from the ceiling. Okay, so a few interesting things here. First, as Peter walks through his high school hall, there's a mural in the background, and you can see Howard Stark among a collage of science and technology. And then, in Peter's classroom, Bruce Banner's photo is placed next to other notable scientists. Also, check out this video that Peter watches of himself as he takes down Ant-Man that we saw in Civil War. The angle of the shot is from the ground level, as it rolls shakily past the action. Now, we know from that scene with Tony Stark in Civil War that Peter likes to set up cameras to record himself in action, so I'm thinking that this might be taken from like a GoPro that he set up on a Roomba or something like that. And if you look closely, you can see Tony Revolori, who was confirmed to play Flash Thompson back at Comic-Con, turn around and giving Peter a stink eye in this scene. And then notice this explosion on the street here. First we see a car blow up, followed by a corner store next to it. So what's going on here? Bodegas don't just explode. Cars do, sometimes. Now my CSI trained analysis suggests that some projectile, a missile perhaps, or maybe just like a beam of energy, blasts through the car and explodes inside the store. And it seems like nothing this destructive has happened in Peter's neighborhood before, making this the event that raises the stakes in the story by bringing the danger to his home. A homecoming of danger, yeah? And then we see Peter's bedroom, or maybe this is Ned's bedroom, we're not really sure. It's filled with Star Wars Easter eggs. First, we see the AT-AT, or at-at if you're wrong, which is fun, considering Peter referenced it specifically when he used the same method to bring down Ant-Man. You know that part? Where they're on the snow planet? It's a walking thingy! Also, Ned drops a Lego Death Star, and if you look closely, you can see vintage Star Wars action figures on the shelf. And now that both Marvel and Star Wars are owned by Disney, we can expect to see lots more of these kinds of crossovers. Let's move on. Stay close to the ground. And stay out of trouble. This section gives us our first look at Michael Keaton as Birdman. I mean, the Vulture, AKA Adrian Tumis. The Vulture is one of the main Spider-Man villains. He's part of the Sinister Six. And fun fact, Sam Raimi initially wanted him to be the villain in the third Spider-Man movie instead of Venom. He's an old man who created a suit that lets him fly and gives him super strength. And at one point he steals Spider-Man's youth. And the Vulture suit looks pretty freaking cool in this movie. It almost looks like he has Stark style repulsors to help him hover and balance. And I love these tiny green lights lights as the eyes, like very, very creepy. And it's rumored that Michael Chernus's The Tinkerer will be behind a lot of this nefarious tech that we see in this movie, though he doesn't appear in this trailer. And it seems like one of the big action scenes in this movie will take place at the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. And it's hard to tell exactly what's going on. The editing makes it look like the vulture is shattering this glass, but that was from a different location. This is the observation deck of the Washington Monument. Really, what I think is happening here is this is a separate scene of the elevator of the Washington Monument being attacked. And this glass belongs to the top floor of the elevator shaft. And we see a lot of other clips later in the trailer with Liz in the elevator and Spider-Man holding on to someone who's falling out of it, who in the international trailer shows us it's Liz. And this cloud of dust coming out of the base of the monument could be that elevator crashing into the bottom level. So my guess is this is all part of a rescue sequence, kind of similar to that Brooklyn Bridge rescue in the first Spider-Man movie, but relocated to the Washington Monument, perhaps as a reference to the battle in Road to Civil War. Let's move on. Forget the flying monster guy. There people who handle this sort of thing. I'm sick of him treating me like a kid all the time. But you are a kid. This is my chance to prove myself. Peter, what is going on with you? I'm really sorry. I'm so busy. I'm slammed. Don't mess with me, because I will kill you and everybody you love. 
Okay, so here we see Peter back with Stark in Avengers headquarters. And it's not exactly clear why Peter is here other than to ask Stark for help in taking down the Vulture. Now, some people are saying it could be similar to a storyline in the comics, like when Peter breaks into the Fantastic Four headquarters in hopes of gaining the security of being part of a super team. I also like this little Easter egg here with Peter wearing the same shirt that we saw Pepper Potts wearing in Iron Man 3. We also see this epic shot of Spider-Man jumping off just the tip of the Washington Monument. And I love everything about this, from them knowing that the capstone of the Washington Monument is made from pure aluminum to this new modification of the Spider-Man suit, web wings, spidey gliders, uh, net weenuses? I don't know. They let him glide like a flying squirrel. And those look like they could be a throwback to the original Steve Ditko design of Spider-Man, which had this weird pointless webbing between the arms and torso. Okay, so if you look closely at this section, you'll find quick cameos by Martin Starr, who plays a teacher and chaperone to the students, as well as Logan Marshall Green and Donald Glover, who seem like they might be playing bad guys. So even though a lot of people were thinking that Donald Glover being in this movie might mean that we might see some connection to Miles Morales, Spider-Man, I don't know if that's gonna happen. And they seem to be testing some more interesting looking tech, which takes the form of a hand and a powerful blast of some kind. And I'm thinking this could be what lit up that car and corner store that we saw earlier in the trailer. But a lot of people are saying that Logan Marshall Green's outfit here looks kind of like the leaked set photos of the Shocker. But it seems more likely that Bokeem Woodbine is going to be the Shocker in this movie. We do see him in the International trailer holding an arm-mounted weapon with more of an electric charge kind of effect here. And his clothes are kind of yellow as well. And that seems to be from the same scene as when Spider-Man gets slammed around a school bus yard. And if you look closely here, Peter is wearing an older version of his suit, the one he had before Stark gave him the upgrade. So either this is a flashback from before Civil War, or more likely, Peter does something to lose the suit, like start confiscating it after Peter tries to overstep his bounds. And Peter's wearing that same older costume in this shot of him looking roughed up on the beach in this fight with the Vulture. So my guess is that this isn't a flashback, but rather something that happens in the middle of the movie. And we hear this menacing line from the Vulture here. I will kill you and everybody you love. Meanwhile, the international trailer offers a little more insight into his character with this line. The world's changing, boys. Time we change too. And that makes the Vulture sound like perhaps the leader of a group of bad guys who are reacting to a world of superheroes and super tech using their own advanced tech for evil purposes. And before we move on, there's a quick shot of this massive blast coming out of the Staten Island Ferry. And it looks like the Vulture is responsible. But I'll talk more about this after this final section. Okay, whatever that blast was, looks like it tore this ferry in half because Spider-Man is now using this webbing to hold it together. And this shot reminds me so much of that awesome scene in Spider-Man 2 with Spider-Man stretching himself to a breaking point to stop the train. And if you look closely, you can see the Statue of Liberty in the background here. Yeah, this trailer is weirdly heavy on distinctly patriotic landmarks. And this final shot is just great. Not only are we gonna get some scenes between Peter Parker and Tony Stark, Spider-Man and Iron Man are actually gonna swoop into action together. I honestly never thought I would see this image in a movie. Now, if you're really into nerd stuff like this, you should definitely sign up with Loot Crate. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service that hooks you up with a bunch of awesome gear from all the nerdy stuff that we cover on this channel, including all Marvel comics. And you can sign up right now by going to lootcrate.com slash rockstars2. Each month has a theme, and the theme for the box that just arrived is magical. So let's take a look. So that was November's box, and December's theme is Revolution, and you can get that by signing up on the 19th of the month by 9 p.m. Pacific. It's less than $20 a month, and if you use our promo code, ROCKSTARS, you'll get 10% off. And we at New Rockstars are doing a bonus giveaway, where Yay! you'll have a chance to win this box that I just opened, and the loot wear that I just opened, plus the cool giveaway that we gave our previous lucky winners. Just sign up for Loot Crate right now at lootcrate.com slash rockstars2, then tweet at us to let us know that you did, and what you're most excited about for Spider-Man homecoming. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments. And of course, please hit like and subscribe to New Rockstars and share this video with your friends. You can also contribute to us on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our current donors. You guys are the best. And if you aren't currently a patron, we'd love your support. You can hit me up on Twitter at EA Voss with any thoughts or predictions or theories you have about Spider-Man homecoming. You can also follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars. All right, thanks for watching.